All right, welcome to another episode, guys. Today we'll be testing and replacing the map barrel switch on this vehicle. Pretty easy process. In this case, we need a multimeter, specifically the volt section on this multimeter, a 10 millimeter wrench, which you'll see in a second or in a few moments while you need that, and a flathead screwdriver. That's really about it. And real quick, I just want to say a quick thank you to YouTube user, YouTube user, uh, D. Marshall, 1982. Uh, I memorized schematics on a uh, Maxima, and I invertly renamed a uh, a switch that was really something else. So he caught it. Just want to say a quick thank you, and uh, that's awesome. I love feedback. So anything that you guys come back, as you can tell, I always try to get to everyone's comments. Uh, so that's why we're here. Uh, so that being said, let's go ahead and let's begin. Now the switch is located toward the front of the vehicle on the driver's side. So of course here's your airbox and just look directly across uh, toward the left of the airbox. And right here, let me point it out here with the screwdriver, right here is your map barrel switch. Now like I said earlier, it is quite easy to get confused here. Again this is the switch, the map barrel switch. Now right next to it, which is this guy right here, it's two separate things, so don't get confused. Now this guy happens to be the EVAP canister purge control solenoid valve, okay? So it's two separate things. Even has its own connector, as you can see right here. So just make sure you find the correct switch or the correct uh, valve that you want to work on. The other thing to look for, or excuse me, the other thing to note is right here, this guy right here is the EGR control solenoid valve. So you have a lot of different systems very close in the vicinity of each other. So just make sure when you're doing this on your vehicle that you know exactly uh, which switch or which valve is doing what. Now the first thing that you want to do is verify that the switch is working correctly. And as you can see, the switch is held on onto this mount with a 12 millimeter, excuse me, a 10 millimeter bolt or nut on the end. And of course we have an electrical connection here along with two hoses on top and then there's another one on the bottom. So we'll remove it from the mount and we'll supply 12 volts worth of current or current from the battery. And we should hear a clicking noise which will verify that the switch is working correctly. So let's go ahead and remove it from the mount and see what we come up with. So carefully just remove the hoses here. We have one up top, one right here, and then you have one more on the bottom, which you, you won't be able to see, but there is one on the bottom as well. Disconnect the lead right here. And then just remove this 10 millimeter nut holding the switch to the bracket. Okay. Okay, now what we're going to do is grab your switch and I'm going to use two leads. I have a red lead here and a black lead that you'll see in a moment. I'm going to apply this red lead to the positive side of the battery. Really a safe way to do this is you should have a fuse built in here because if we cross the wires, the fuse will blow and we'll be okay. I don't have a fuse handy unfortunately, so if you don't have a fuse and you're doing this, just be really careful because again, obviously you don't want to cross, cross the wires here. So this red lead, will attach to terminal one. Now terminal one happens to be this guy right here. So just go ahead, place it over the terminal, and then make sure in this case, I'm going to engulf any metal showing on this terminal with this rubber boot, because it, obviously we don't want to cross the wires. Then get your positive, or excuse me, get your negative lead to the negative side on the battery. Then we're just going to touch terminal two and you hear it click. This is what you want to hear. This verifies, let me just remove this, 
this verifies that this switch is working correctly. If you do supply power to the switch and you don't hear that clicking noise, the switch is bad and you'll need to replace it. Okay, so as you can see, I reattached the switch to the, to the uh, mount here. Now let's say, for example, you're getting a code 1105. So in other words, you just tested the switch. It's making a clicking noise. You know that the switch is okay, but for some reason your check engine light is coming on. What you want to do is verify if power, or check if power is indeed getting from the switch to the, uh, excuse me, if power is getting from the connector here to the switch. Now to do that, go ahead and just turn the key, the ignition key to the on position. Don't crank the car, just turn the key to the on position. Once you do that, get yourself a multimeter or a voltmeter. And what you want to do is with the negative terminal, attach that to ground or the negative terminal on the battery. And then take the positive lead and you want to touch it to terminal 2 on the connector. And I know it's a little hard maybe for you guys to see, but there's two terminals in here. There's terminal 1 uh, and terminal 2. So you're just going to touch terminal 2 with the positive lead. And of course my multimeter falls here. Okay. And we should see battery voltage. And we do, we have 11.8, which is uh, roughly 12 volts. So this just verified that power is indeed getting from this harness connector to the switch. If you're not getting a reading here, then what you want to do is check the wires back here. Very often they may fray, sometimes they melt, believe it or not. Just make sure that the wires are in good shape. Uh, repair the problem, and then you'll have power back uh, going to that switch. And really two other things I just want to note here guys. Number one, if you're getting this code 1105 and your switch is okay, your power is indeed getting to this connector, check the hoses as well. Uh, if, you, if they're dry, if they're cracked, just replace them. Just remove them, bring them to your local auto parts supplier. They'll cut them to length, replace them, do yourself a favor, and that's it. You'll be uh, in good shape. Don't forget, you have three hoses here. You have one right here the second one, and the bottom one. So just make sure they're all in good shape. The last thing to check, if your hosing looks good, if you follow this hose, it leads to this guy right here. This happens to be the absolute pressure sensor. Now this sensor works in conjunction with this switch. This sensor is no longer working correctly. It could throw a code 1105, and uh, you may be looking at the wrong thing altogether. I will have a repair video showing how you can test this uh, sensor within the week so you can check this as well but to be honest most of the times you're receiving code 1105 is because the switch itself went bad or the power is not getting to the switch so just make sure that uh, you check all of these things before you run out and buy the uh, by the switch because again it could be a number of these things